Hey guys, welcome to the first video on this channel. I'm Wietse and I'm in my own YT studio and I want to talk with you about mono compatibility because mono compatibility is something very important but it's also very forgotten a lot of times. So when you're a beginner, mono compatibility is really difficult to understand. So I will try to make things as easy as possible. I've divided this video or actually this kind of tutorial thing into two videos uh, part one and part two uh, this part is going to be about face in face out of face and that kind of stuff while the other video is going to be more into the mono and stereo compatibility things but to keep things easy we're starting right now with face response or well just face so first of all let's explain what's on the screen so I've got three channels over here three mono channels the first channel we've got a sine wave uh, at 1 kilohertz. We've got another sine wave at 1 kilohertz over here. And we've got a recording channel which records both channels together into one. It sums it together. Uh, let me make the waveform a little bit bigger. So first of all, what is this waveform actually uh, saying? What, what, what are these waves about? Well, we've got a line in the middle which is zero. And we've got a line at the top, which is the maximum and the minimum. It's all about voltages in this case, but e it's easier to understand if we are going to watch at a speaker. So what is a speaker actually doing compared to these waves? So on zero, the speaker is at, at its resting position. When the wave goes up, the speaker goes outwards until it's at the top and then it's at the maximum outwards level or where it can be at max. If you go further, it will break. Then it goes back to zero, and then the speaker goes inwards as far as possible until it's here, and then it goes back. And that's how it makes a difference in pressure in the room, in, in the acoustics. Here's what it sounds like, of course, a sine wave of one kilohertz. We all know how it sounds, but this is it. So just a beep. What do we get if we sum those, these two together? Well, we actually get twice as much energy because we pump twice as much voltages in it. It's not really the truth uh, because uh, audio is logarithmic, but I think that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. So what, the, what we get? Well, we can actually see what we will get when we record this because Pro Tools will render another waveform of this. So let's zoom out, let's record this. You can already hear it's louder. It's actually so loud it's almost clipping my bus. Apart from the fact that it's a bit delayed, uh, you will see that it's twice as powerful. So what happens when we reverse this phase? Invert it actually, so invert this signal. So it looks like this. When we're going to look at it right now, this is really interesting. So, so here we are in, at a positive level and here we are at a negative level. But if you sum those two together, it will be zero. And I can demonstrate this, of course, by just recording a small piece of the scene, the sine wave. We also don't hear anything because there is nothing to hear. Because there's nothing left over from this. So let's get a bit creative with this. Um, there is no track with actually a sine wave in it, so uh, let's uh, see how this works with kicks. And uh, I've got an example over here. I've got two layers of kick, or actually two kick layers, or how do you want to call it. And let's first listen to it. So let's take them out of solo. So, it's actually not a bad kick. When I listened to this the first time, what I uh, directly one designation here is get more punch out of it, more, more oomph. I don't know how to say it in a different way. So there are a few ways uh, to do this. Um, you can get all difficult with, with multiband compressors and, and limiters and, and EQing and distortion and stuff. But before you do that, there's an important thing to try and that's well, in Pro Tools, we, you, you need a trim for this. I don't know what it's called in your DAW, um, but in Pro Tools, you can use a trim. And it's got this small button over here, 
what it does, it, it just flips the face. It flips the polarity of the track, what I did with the sine wave. Let's first look at it, if we can see something. I'm not sure about that. Well, yeah, if we see this, yeah, sometimes it's something, sometimes it's not. It's not a perfect situation. The world isn't perfect. Deal with it. Let's flip the face of one of the two, two channels and listen to it again. Whoa, what happened there? So, let's compare. Let, let me loop it. This. So what we get with just one button press is a whole different sounding kick. It's up to you to decide which is the best. Um, for the production th these kicks came from, I've used it uh, with one channel out of phase because that would fit the mix better. But I can imagine it also will fit with uh, uh, ju just both in phase. This is actually all I wanted to tell you about phase and, and uh, in phase, out phase of audio. I hope you did understand it. I also hope you like this video and you can do something with it. Uh, get creative with it. Uh, if you do, please let me know. Give a thumbs up somewhere below. And I will try to make more videos. I don't have a lot of time to make videos, but I will try to make videos if you like it and if you want more tips. So my next video will be about mono compatibility. Yeah. Bye.